So I just got done this weekend doing a show. I don't even remember what the actual name of the show is. It happened at the Monarchs Field, which I think for this event was called Los Monarchs Field. It was a Latino festival, or it was very much geared toward that. I'm going to start off with the positives first, <laughs> just, just for my own mental sake. The show was interesting. The one staff member that I did interact with, uh, a lady named Becca, did everything she could to accommodate everybody that was there, even to lengths that I was surprised they were willing to do. So the whole gist of it was, it was advertised as a sort of event that was honoring Latino, Hispanic. For me, okay, I wanna put a qualifier, a preface with this. I certainly identify as what I've always called Hispanic because I speak Spanish. I understand Spanish. Latin, con Latin countries en envelop a lot more, which can include places that speak Portuguese and stuff like that. There is a wide berth in there of people's culture. And I am of indigenous stock. I am either, there's Taras Tarascan or Purapeca. And like I said, yo puedo hablar español muy bien. An event has to be more than, than saying, hey, we want to put on something and, and make it about this. Because if not, right, if, if there's some authentic aspects behind it, Great, fantastic. But it can become trendy and blown out, sort of like what happens with, you know, St. Patrick's Day. Getting back to this show, it was a mixture of sort of a small car show, live music, vendors, and artists. And I'll get to that here in a minute. There is distinctly a difference there. And then food trucks, and then a carnival. And I had, I, I want to also state this is the second time at this video because I was a little more negative in the initial one, and then I got a little bit more information and I understood more where I was coming from on what I wanted to speak about with this. I only really interacted with, with one staff person in in person, and two via, via email. There is no ill feelings or anything toward anyone at the show, but the premise of the show bugged me because it felt more like this was something they could make money with, and so they ran with it. And the more I'm learning from different people that were at the show and involved with how this whole thing was created, it certainly seems that way. I hope I'm wrong. I try to look at the better part of people. I try to dive into this and go, what is the most fair aspect I could look at? And I didn't always used to be this way. I'd be the first one to bitch about something and be like, fuck this thing. Uh, that isn't the case here. And I'm trying to be really careful about it. Did people show up? Yeah, not a lot. But people did show up. The good thing was that at least for what it's worth, the show was fairly well put together but you could tell since this was the first time this had ever happened the growing pains were so present I didn't have a real good idea from where I was where my tent and booth were set up what the overall attendance really was as I later found out the carnival which was located on the outside of the stadium had its own entry fee, and then you had to pay to get into the stadium where the food trucks 
the small row of artists that I was in, five or six total, and then a bunch of vendors downfield from us in the outer field area up above behind the seating. So you had quite a bit of ways to walk around. The first day was weird. You could see that people were starting to head into the carnival. It didn't really start to kind of pick up until three o'clock. As sparse as it was, I had friends that came by and never found my booth. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't expect a lot of people to come out to this. Even if I had really pushed the advertisement, but there were things I was confused about. How much did it cost to get in? I'm not going to promote something unless I know at least a ballpark idea as to what it's going to be to get into the show. So while I'm talking, I'm going to go ahead and do some overlays here of just random shots. And so you guys can see kind of what I'm talking about with the show. I didn't doctor any of this. This is just the amount of people that were there and what was going on. Throughout the time, there were performers and bands taking the stage, alternating with Lucha Libre, which was fantastic. And those guys are amazing. And I'll get, I'll get to that here more in a minute, why that was so important for me. So I'm gonna cut to the chase, real talk shit. I didn't make anything, not a dime, not a dime. And I thought, okay, there's a lot of other events happening, NACACON. My favorite convention that I didn't get into this year was happening this weekend. There were a lot of other things. I think Busker Fest was happening in Lawrence. There was a lot of different things happening. It's Memorial Day weekend. I'm certain that the World War I Museum had events going on, all kinds of things like that. I got in on this because at the last minute they had reduced the amount, because I think it started out at a hundred bucks per booth for the artists, and then they lowered it down to 50, and then you still had to go get I can't, I think you had to get insurance for the spot. I don't remember everything. Just playing the waiting game long enough, I ended up getting in for free. And that was cool. I'm glad because I didn't make any money. And it was a gamble, right? You, and for any of you that do shows, it's like, is it going to pay off? And, the, and I think I was there about four hours after setup on Saturday. And I was like, I'm not making any money at this, am I? Because there wasn't anyone to really sell to. And even speaking to one or two of the other people that were there, they were like, you know, I, this is different. This isn't like a normal craft fair. Why are we so separated from the vendors? There's no way. And then it, it literally hit us. When the DJ started kicking in, there was this wall of sound that hit us. You didn't hear it if you walked over to the food trucks and you didn't hear it if you walked back to where the vendors were. But where we were, the five or six artists that were set up there, you were literally yelling at people. If you were two feet from somebody, you had to yell at them. And it's that awkward thing where suddenly if the music stops, you're just sounding like you're screaming your fool head off like you're in an argument. So it made me really reluctant to want to engage in the few people that even came by. I didn't make any money and I handed out a total of five business cards. For anyone that follows me, you know my show reviews. You know how I do these things. I'm not even justifying this show by giving it that kind of a review. I just, number one, I don't feel like doing it. Number two, I just, there wasn't that much interesting to really say about it. So I decided to add it in this journal. The little bits that are and that were interesting. There's a weird feeling when you do a show and you're like, these are not my people. And boy, <laughs> they were not my people. Not at all. The majority of the work there was focused around sports, around Lucha Libre, that sort of thing, which is fine. For me, it didn't work at fucking all. And, you know, you guys know what I have. Um, my comic book stuff from Ardor, darker things, darker fantasy, robots, anime-inspired stuff, shadow puppetry stuff. That's my bread and butter. That's what I do. And I'm glad that I stuck with that. I, will, I don't, don't normally do other stuff unless I really feel like it. I will say, after having watched the wrestling, I did feel inspired to want to do something in my style that was along the lines of Lucha Libre because of the designs on the mask. When I was a kid, I used to watch it a lot. I kind of grew out of it. This kick started it up again for me. What it was worth, some of the music helped. The wrestling, when it happened, was amazing.
just phenomenal. I took my journals and one of them was to sketch in. I just, I, I managed to get two drawings done. I actually put in earpieces, not to listen to music, to just mute out the sound that you could literally feel reverberating across the floor and all of the structure, just as it echoed back and forth. I did a two page journal entry, uninterrupted. If I had people come in, they were little kids that looked quickly and the parents pulled them along. And I kind of wondered, well, how much did it cost to get in here? Come to find out in the, what I guess was the VIP section, which is where the artists, the vendors, the food trucks, the, the ground area down below, as you've seen in these clips, where the wrestling ring was set up and the concert aspect was, where the performers were, that soundstage, that was $20 from what I'm understanding to get in there. And it also cost to get into the carnival. I don't think it was $5. I think it was 10. So regardless, it was at least 25 per person to get to see everything in there on top of getting in there. Let's just say two people go. That's $50, $40 right around that, right? Just to get in. You're going to get thirsty. You're going to get hungry. And the food there was pretty good. The food truck that I got food from look at these tacos, was pretty damn good. The whole feel of it was just one where I, the show didn't really know what, it, what the identity was it was trying to be. And I've been to shows like that, other shows that have been more pop culture oriented where they're like, let's just throw everything in the kitchen sink in there and it just falls flat. It takes a lot to be able to successfully do a show like that and do it well enough that you can replicate it again and again and again. I think had the scope been smaller in this show, it would have been more successful. The second day, nothing was going on. And like an idiot, I got there extra early. Nobody in the artist row had to be there until one. Most everyone else rolled in, I think around 1.30 and two, except for me and one other. The vendors didn't even give enough of a damn to show up. And some of them were gone. And there was a fellow that I overheard on the phone. I don't think he saw me. And I'm going to say this just because of what it was. This isn't anything inflammatory. You can see it from my videos. He was talking to somebody. He's like, hey, are you going to be able to make it down? No. Okay. Well, yeah, no, no. You know, it's kind of weird. Uh, I really thought, you know, that we were going to have more people out here. No, no. Um. It's about 300 yesterday, about a little over 300 people showed up yesterday for the duration of the day. Yeah, yeah, no, we were, we were expecting quite a bit more. And I believe he said that they were expecting a couple thousand people to show up because believe me, if you're looking at these video clips, you can tell they were planning the wide spacing was to accommodate a far greater amount of people than what showed up. Sunday had a surprising rebound, but not to the best effect. They certainly weren't there for art. They certainly weren't there for much of anything. The only two positive and I that were exemplary situations that I were, was put in dealing with my art was on Saturday. I met a fellow who works, he's on the board for the Kansas City Museum. And I was ecstatic. We talked for a little bit, traded business cards. That was cool. The second circumstance was a random fellow that was coming to work at the stadium, I believe. And he was certainly in uniform, so I'm assuming he worked there. He gets there and he walks by and I see him. And at this point, the wrestling's going on. So I was watching that. I almost missed him. And he walks in and he's like, oh my God, dude, these are, these are freaking amazing. I have all my stuff laid out there on the wall. And I'm going to tell you right now, that made me feel really good <laughs> after a whole two days, which... The first day I stayed there almost 11 or 12 hours. The second day I got there about one o'clock and I was noping the hell out by nine. I just, the cacophony of noise, the number of people that were simply wandering around, not interacting with the creatives or anything, unless they knew them ahead of time. And I didn't really know anyone. The few people that did try and come by to see me, which I was blown away. The row was not that deep, man. It was like six people and some tables and two tents. I brought mine and they provided one for somebody else. I saw another tent down at the end. So I don't know. I don't remember whose that was. And 
it was, you know, but I was like, maybe it was the blandness, you know, of that area. Like it just, cause you're the, the music was just slamming into that area. There was a lot of things that just didn't strategically make sense on how it was executed. He picked up my business card and we talked shop real quick about anime. He wasn't really into it. He was like, oh no, dude, Transformers are more my jam. I'm, a, I'm like, oh, you mean, yeah, okay, cool. You know, and I, and I meant to point at the art that I had on the wall about it. I mean, he certainly probably wasn't gonna be able to buy anything right there. And I understood that. I was just happy. I was talking to somebody about robots and Transformers and shit. Anybody, I almost said any idiot, <laughs> anybody can put together an event. You can advertise it, you can talk it up, you can do whatever you want. When the rubber hits the road and you're in that moment and you're trying to get through your show, that's whenever you can tell if you've riveted it all together. Because the devil's in the details. Maybe you didn't plan on parking. You know, maybe you got overstuffed with people, maybe there was something else going on. A lot of shows I attended in 2022 had this circumstance happen for them. I don't believe I'll be going back and doing this show. I just don't, even if it's free, I wouldn't do it. Part of it was that I felt a little bit, and this, this is especially after talking to a good dear friend of mine, her take on it really kind of got to me where I thought, you know, I jumped into this because quite frankly, I was desperate to make some money. I was like, hey, hang on, I need, I gotta get some other stuff going. I need some influx of cash right now. I'm gonna try and do this. I would have been better off just staying at home and working on my lawn, the studio, other things like that than having gone and done this. And that's painful to admit. I, you know, like I said, with the wrestlers, I'm gonna end on this because I wanna end on a happy note. As you've been watching the footage throughout this video, look at how stunningly ecstatic they are to be there. You'd think they were playing and performing in Madison Square Gardens to thousands of people. Each and every single one of them came out and some of them went above, uh, above and beyond. They did like 150%. They were in character, they were pushing the storyline, they were working it and they did amazing jobs getting the dozens of people that were there to clap to rouse with them, to do all the things you expect when you watch these sort of wrestling events. And if you're not familiar, do yourself a favor and just watch some clips. Sometimes they're really entertaining. I was a big fan of 1980s wrestling and I have always liked Lucha Libra stuff. This kind of reignited a lot of it for me. And so I was really happy and it was entertaining. It took my mind off the fact that nobody was in my tent. Nobody was buying anything. And so at the end of the day, I took a lesson from them. It reminds me a lot of, and this is a quote I've often said, I got a chance to tell Steve Bloom this. Steve Bloom is the voice actor. If you've ever watched the X-Men animated cartoon, he did Wolverine, he was Spike Spiegel in Cowboy Bebop. He does an amazing spectrum of voice actors, of, of voice roles, I'm sorry. He was quoted in an interview, and I have the clip of it, and I keep this little piece of paper with me all the time. The audition is the job. If you take that further, every single time you're doing something that you truly feel passionate about, something that you're into, it should be everything you have in that moment. And in fact, in one of the restrooms, there was a quote, I should have taken a photo of it, but pulling out a camera in a restroom is just super weird. It's from Jackie Robinson. If you wanna see it, go to the Casey Monarch Stadium. I don't remember which restroom it's in, but they all have these little sayings from different players. And on that one, he was talking about how when he's on the field, he gives it his all. 100% if not more, everything he's got. But when he's off the field, he leaves that alone and he gets back to his family. And I thought about that. These guys, even after the performance, they were at their table selling merchandise, getting people jazzed up, taking photos. I really wished I'd walked over and taken a photo with them. I, I don't know, for some reason I just didn't. But they were still the most amazing thing there for me. I'm not knocking the musicians and the dancers. That was great too. But music is something people can chill out to and a lot of people were enjoying and that sort of stuff. They kept, you know, the wrestlers kept trying to get people to get around there and everything. It was just, it was really cool guys. It was really, really neat. So to put a cap on this, 
like I said, would I do the show again? No, unfortunately, no. I'd love to be able to say something more positive, but it's just a hard no this time. There's so many other events that were going on, so many others that even, I probably could have given them a shot. I probably could have just stayed home and worked on, worked on my marketing and had better residuals. Somebody might've bought something. I could have gone live on Twitch. I could have done anything. And it would have been from the comfort of my home. But at least I can say now, I did what I had to do and I went and did this show and it didn't work. And that's fine. That's totally fine. Life is a series of ups and downs. And just because something went wrong in this one end doesn't mean that everything went into the trash with it. It's just what I have to look at. And in the long run, who knows what's gonna happen with any contacts or connections, the few that I did make. Maybe something positive will come from that. I don't know, I have no idea. I'm certainly at that point in my career right now where <sighs> anything has to go at this point, you know? I'm gonna take chances, just like jumping off the top turnbuckle and landing on somebody. You really don't know if that's gonna be the last time you do that and you'll be a paraplegic. You have no idea. Let a foot go the wrong way, let a fan stop, you know, jump in the way. Some Anything can go wrong. And I wanna be a little bit more reckless with how I make decisions, but I also wanna be somebody that learns from them and understands more about what I have to bring literally to the performance. So with that, I'm gonna end here because I only wanted it to be 20 minutes. It's 25 now, I'm trying to cut these down, I'm trying to chop these down. So yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching guys. I am Mario the Artisan Road. You can find links down below that go to everywhere else, including my Gumroad store and stuff. I have some more really cool videos coming up this week. All week long, I have built up my backlog of videos. Now, basically Monday through Friday, I will have videos, shorts, all kinds of things debuting all week long. I'm really excited about that. It takes a lot of pressure off me because there's other things that I need to catch up on. And it's just cool. I'm having fun again making videos and I'm hoping that this is gonna progress into some other things. So with that, thank you for watching and I will catch you guys in my next journal entry. Take care.